Alright guys, so in this video we're checking out these patch antennas that are specifically made for the DJI FPV goggles and these are come in a set of four here along with uh, some circular polarized antennas for the air unit and they're intended to replace uh, the stock antennas that come with the DJI goggles and the air unit. Uh, very unusual um, setup here. So you get uh, two left hand polarized patch antennas and two right hand polarized patch antennas and you get these little angle adapters so that you can stick them on here and by the way they do come with a little wrench to put them on but these are extremely because of the way the goggles are designed they're very hard to get on and off so I uh, can tell you that I don't plan on using this going forward just because um, uh, putting this with the antennas on to a case is not possible at least with the one I've got and I didn't see that much of a performance improvement I uh, you'll see that in the testing later in this video uh, if you guys want to see all the flight footage and everything like that but uh, basically spoiler alert um, if you're flying in environments like I am uh, not too far away I'm not sure if you're getting that much benefit from the this setup here. Maybe a little bit. Hard to tell. I did try and fly on 25 milliwatts at the lowest power setting and see if they would make any difference. I t decided to test this in, ho in the hopes that it would give better performance in uh, more multipath uh, intensive environments like a parking garage, which you'll see here in the demo. But I'm, um, uh, yeah. Not sure if I'm convinced that even in that case, uh, their performance is all that much better. I think they're targeting this particular setup here for people that are flying pretty far. So I, I have no means of testing that, or and, and I'm not going to be testing that on my channel. So if you're someone that is planning to fly, you know the whatever the maximum range of the DJI system is four kilometers or something like that, something ridiculous. Um, you may get better performance on this. I didn't see any tests from this company as to any proof on that, and I haven't seen that anywhere else. So obviously, um, whatever they're saying in terms of Im Im improvement in range over the stock antennas, I cannot verify that. The other thing that's kind of strange is, like I said, like I said, like I said there's a left hand, two left-handed and two right-hand patch antennas, but then on the air unit, they give you a left-handed and a right-handed antenna. I'm assuming that this blue heat drink here is left-handed and this is right-handed. So this is very odd. i um, not sure why everything isn't left-handed like it is on stock. Um, and I didn't actually test these because I didn't test it with, I didn't test it, these patch antennas with the air unit. I tested it with the Vista system because I wasn't really planning on going far away anyway. I think if you are going to be doing a long range then you probably definitely want to test it with the setup the way that they designed it, but I'm a little skeptical as to why everything isn't the same, why there's a left-handed and a right-handed. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So someone can explain why they did that. I'm interested to hear what the theories are. I can't even grasp at a possible theory as to why they did that because it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't seem like that would help. It seems like that would make things worse, in my opinion. But like I said, I didn't test that. I don't fly four kilometers away, so there's no way for me to know. Anyway, um, yeah. Um, let's go ahead and I'll show you the way I tested it. I tested it with the Vista system in a parking garage at 25 milliwatts and also uh, a close, uh, fairly close range uh, in an open area at 25 milliwatts. And then you guys look at the video footage, which is basically the um, DVR recorded footage on the goggles to see if you see any differences, um, at least in the quality of the video footage coming back to the goggles. All right, so I'm going to test this first on 25 milliwatts with the stock antennas. All right, so I'm on 25 milliwatts on the stock antennas here. Do the test first on the, on uh, just 25 milliwatts. I'm not going for maximum range or range test here. Just want to see what the uh, video looks like. And I'm gonna go 
around this parking garage here. There's a lot of stuff that's a lot of metal and concrete here. It's going to cause some interference, but we'll see what that does to the picture quality and latency. Latency is up to about 36 milliseconds now and bit rate's at 20. So a little bit of loss in bit rate. But stock antennas are doing just fine. I'm gonna go up this ramp here and go above us. It's quite windy. Let's see, let's see the 95X are getting kind of bounced around a lot. But latency is uh, about 40 something milliseconds. Picture looks still fine. I am noticing the latency a little bit now. Let's see if the numbers are any better. Yeah, we're getting low signal as well. See if the numbers are any better with the um, patch antennas. All right, so we're gonna try this uh, with the patch antennas now. And we'll see if there's any difference in the latency and bit rate numbers. Video quality seems about the same. I'll have the uh, OSD overlay with the latency and bit rate numbers on the screen. Hard to tell as if there's any difference at all. It feels about the same. Uh, bit rate's a bit higher, it seems. Still in the 25 range, even way over here. Let's go uh, above us here in the next level. Uh, wind is pretty bad right now. Still 25 megabits. Latency is about the same as before. So the bit rate, and now it's coming down to about 15, 16 here, and low signal. So about the same, not much difference on 25 milliwatts at this range. We'll try and go into a more open area and see how far I can go. All right, so this is with the patch antennas and on 25 milliwatts again. Let's gonna see how far I can go. And when I get some red bars, I'll turn around. You guys can see the latency numbers in the overlay. Down to three bars. Know, four bars, three bars. Perfect video. Just a little bit of jello. All 
Yeah, down to two bars, three bars. So this is like 700 or so meters away here. Oh, now I'm getting really turned around here. So the antenna's pointing away, getting down to two bars here. And then the video got pretty bad. No loss of control. And let's put on the, uh, we'll compare this to the uh, standard antennas, the stock antennas. So I got the uh, stock antennas on and I'm going to go the same path here and see how far I can go and see what the signal and bitrate and all that numbers look like. The wind is just bad again today. So 25 milliwatts again. Not really looking for super long range, I just want to see how far I can go on 25 milliwatts and see if there's any difference. The numbers seem like they're about the same. The bitrate's a lot lower here. Uh, yeah, yeah, not going as far and the bitrate's a lot lower. So. On this test here, at least, it looks like the patch antennas do offer a little bit of improvement, at least on 25 milliwatts. So if you extrapolate that further to a higher power, then you definitely should be able to get more range on the higher powers versus just 25 milliwatts. I just wanted to see if there was any kind of a noticeable difference, and there's a little bit of difference on 25 milliwatts. And if you're going further out, I think you might see more of a difference on higher power. Oh, this wind is not good. But on another note, I did try and uh, fix the mount for the 95X here. The gel is a little bit better, but it's still there. What do you guys think of the performance difference with these patch antennas? Any better? Would you go for it? Let me know in the comments.